So, hi. Uh, a lot of people were asking me to come up with an ink formulation that could be used for electroplating organic substances. Things like uh, leaves, flowers, wood, bone, that kind of thing. Now, um, although it sounds a bit like I'm blowing my own trumpet, it's actually quite difficult to do something like that, because obviously what you need has to have a whole degree of qualities. So the first thing is it's got to stick to whatever you're painting it on. It has to be conductive. It has to be uh, resistant, resistant enough to take the harsh conditions of an electroplating bath. It has to um, conduct through that electroplating bath to allow the deposition of metal on it. And it must follow the form of whatever you painted it on. So if you put it onto a leaf, what you want to show are the leaf veins. You don't want to show a great big ugly lump. Uh, and so I finally came up with this. Now, this is a graphite-based ink, and it uses a mixture of um, alkyds, uh, triglycerides actually. Polyvinyl acetate is in there, there's uh, water, there's some sodium chloride, and um, some polyethylene glycol. Now, it's uh, relatively innocuous, so I mean, you wouldn't want to go drinking the thing, but it's not going to harm you if you get it on your hands, for instance. Uh, and it's no volatile organic contents in there, there's no sort of turpentine or any oils in there that you're uh, going to be able to smell. So it's a pretty safe uh, kind of ink as well, which is another one of those qualities that you want when you're using something at home. Now, it's applied just with a normal brush, and it settles a little bit, so you need to give it a bit of a stir up and cover your brush. Now, when you put this on, you want to put on several thin coats rather than one thick coat. And when you apply the first coat, you're going to get a resistance of somewhere around about... Um, 2,000 ohms, something like that, which is a bit high, so it takes about three coats in order to do it. Now I put the first coat on this leaf, it's just a rhododendron leaf from my garden, it's just an example, and the first coat went on in that direction, so the second coat goes on 90 degrees to that, and you just paint it on. And as you can see, it goes on quite nicely. So I paint it on at 90 degrees, and then when you've painted it, just set it to one side to dry. Now, once that is actually dry, you um, can paint on the third coat, and when you test its conductivity, you should get somewhere around about uh, 150 to 200 ohms, and that's going to be fine. Now, this bit of paper has had three coats on it, and I burnished it. And if you burnish it, you get this kind of nice metallic sheen to it that's relatively conductive. Uh, you don't need to burnish it, you can actually just use it as is. And if I turn on the uh, meter and show you that conductive reading, then there you go. 161 ohms. Actually, it's actually, yeah, 161 ohms. So that's quite a nice resistivity for being able to do that. Now, once you've coated your object in um, your conductive ink, what you need to do is plate it. Now, I'm not really a very good electroplater. There are people out there who are far better than me and will give you much better advice on the composition of electroplating baths than I can. Uh, I'm all about the ink, really. Uh, there's lots of good YouTube videos on it, so just do a Google search, have a look at them, and they'll tell you all the various baths you need. Uh, you can electroplate this with just about whatever you can make a bath out of, as it happens. Copper, nickel, zinc, anything you want, you can electroplate onto that. Uh, again, this is not about the electroplating bath, it's about the ink. But once you've got it done, what you do need is an electroplating bath. And it's a simple one that I use, and all that's in this bucket is a uh, litre of water and 80 grams of copper sulphate. And I know there are better baths, okay? That's just a very simple one. So we have our coated leaf, our electroplating bath, and we need some source of electricity. And again, you've got a number of sources of this, and one would be just a wall wart. Uh, this is a 12 volt wall wart, wall wart, and it's limited to 500 milliamps. You just put out the positive and the negative and attach them up, and there you go. The other thing, which is a nice, neat little trick that I came across, is a couple of D-cells. And if you put a um, magnet, tiny little neo-magnet, on the positive and negative, then it's a really easy way to connect them in series. The neos are um, surrounded with nickel, so it makes a nice little in-series connection there, and that's going to be my power supply. 
Now you connect a lump of uh, copper, and in this case I'm using just a round of copper wire that I stripped out of a cable, you can use a pipe, pop that into your bath and connect that to the positive. Now if you think about it, it makes sense, because um, what's in there is copper sulphate, and that's the copper is positively charged. So when you connect up the electricity, the positive ions are going to be attracted to the negative electrode. And that's what you want to happen. When the positive ion gets a negative electrode, they get some electrons and they deposit out as copper. So the thing that you're going to play it, you attach to the negative. Your sacrificial copper, you attach to the positive. So I've attached my leaf there to the negative, and there we go. And I just drop that in there. And that will begin to electroplay it. And you just swirl it around a little bit. Now with this um, low voltage source, you don't actually see any bubbling per se, but it's already beginning to coat on that. I don't know if you can see that. So I'm going to leave that in there about five minutes and then get back to you. Okay, so I've left this about three or four minutes, that's all. And as you can see, it's beginning to plate up quite nicely. The pink colour is the copper being deposited on it. Now, before anybody starts to tell me that there are better ways of doing this, I know there are. There are much better ways of actually electroplating something. This is just a quick bath to give you an idea uh, of how to go about it, really, and that the ink works. The whole video is really about the ink. It's about um, this little material that you can paint on any organic substrate, so wood, leaves, flowers, booties, paper, lots of things it'll paint on and it allows you to electroplate. That's the whole point of it. Um, there are plenty of really informative videos and really knowledgeable guys out there who will talk you through actual electroplating, so bath constituents, uh, composition of baths, what kind of current density to look at, what's the best ways of setting up the um, electronic supply. And I would go to them first before you ask me because I'm really not an electroplating guy. I'm, I'm um, a chemist and that's what I've come up with. Now uh, I also gave it a go on a bird skull that I happen to have. I live by the sea and I found this on the beach and as you can see that's also beginning to play quite nicely. So it'll play lots and lots of different things. Now I'm going to sell this and the link to the little shop that I've got is in the description and I've also put a link to um, my email so that if you want to email me with any questions, please feel free. But again, please email me questions about the ink, not about the bath composition. There's just so many more knowledgeable people out there about that than, than me. I, I know about the ink. I don't know that much about um, bath compositions, electro deposition. Anyway, I hope it was helpful to you, and thank you very much for watching, and um, good luck.